بلى من أسلم وجهه لله وهو محسن فله أجره عند ربه ولا خوف عليهم ولا هم يحزنون وأقول في القرآن ما جاءت به آياته فهو الكريم المنزل وأقول قال الله جل جلاله والمصطفى الهادي ولا أتأول الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين All praises due to Allah May Allah's peace and blessings be upon His final messenger Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم Worship, as Muslim we know that worship is something fundamental to our lives something, it is our main objective in this world and Allah Azza wa Jal has you know, uh, talked about worship in so many verses talking about different aspects of worship Today, inshallah, we want to concentrate on some verses talking about some aspects of worship. Fundamentally, what are the two main conditions of worship? And how does, the, how does understanding these conditions affect our worship when we worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? First of all, we want to know that Allah Azza wa has created us all equal. And no one can claim that he is better than someone else regarding grace, regarding status, regarding wealth, except in one thing. Yes, there is one thing that if a person knows for sure that he has more than other, then definitely he is better than the other person. And Allah Azza wa has said this in the Quran. Allah Azza wa has said in Surah Al-Hujurat, Ya ayyuha nasu inna khalaqnakum min dhakarin wa untha. We have created you from male and female. وَجَعَلْنَاكُمْ شُعُوبًا وَقَبَائِلًا لِتَعَارَفُوا And we made you tribes and nations لِتَعَارَفُوا To know one another. You know, this person, okay, came from this country. Uh, he is from this family. Oh, okay, we know, we relate. This person has, is coming from this family. This other person, person is coming from that country, from this nationality, from this tribe, and so on. So, to know one another. This is, that's it, full stop. To know one another. Not to claim that this race is better than the other race. That person is better than the other person because he, because he comes from that country or this country. None of this. Islamically, none of this makes sense. And none of this is a criterion to say that this person is better than the other. This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying. Allah, the one who created us, is telling us this. He's the one who created this person, you know, from that country and that person from that country. This person is from that race, whatever. He's the one who did this. And he subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَجَعَلْنَاكُمْ شُعُوبًا وَقَبَائِلْ لِتَعَارَفُوا Then how do we differ? In what aspect do we differ? How do we vary in ranks? Is it based on wealth? Is it based on social status? Is it based on uh, what, um, uh, how a person looks like? No, Allah Azza wa Jal said, إِنَّ أَكْرَمَكُمْ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ أَتْقَاكُمْ Inna akramakum inda Allahi atkhakum. Indeed, look, inna tawkid, inna akramakum. Indeed, the most noble amongst you are atkhakum, the most righteous. So the factor that makes a difference, the criterion on how one person is better than the other, is in righteousness. SubhanAllah, not even in knowledge, in righteousness, which is the fruit of the knowledge. Subhanallah. Yani, one person who could be poor, nobody even uh, cares about. He could have, subhanallah, so many diseases. He could have an incomplete, some limbs missing. But in terms of the hearts, his righteousness is way more than many people who are, who have a lot of money, uh, are very famous in the society and the nations. Yet that person is more righteous than them. He is more noble. Pay attention to this word, in the sight of Allah. So he could be the most noble amongst us, could be unknown to the people. Because this is the important factor. We said righteousness. So in reality, can we know which person is better than the other person? We, as humans, can never know. But we know that the main factor, the major factor is, the most important factor is righteousness. And righteousness is the sum of the, the worship of the heart with the worship of the limbs. And one, one can, can claim that this person is worshipping Allah more than the other, 
is practicing more than the other, but in reality, we only see the outward worship. We don't know what's in the hearts. That other person could be doing a lot of worship in terms of the heart, and he could be doing a lot of worship, you know, which are hidden from the eyes of the people. So righteousness is what differs. And by the way, look at this verse, yani in Surah Al-Hujurat, when did this verse come? Look at the context. This verse came after Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala commanded the people, you know, not to mock one another, not to belittle one another, uh, not to backbite. Uh, when he said, لا يسخر قوم من قوم عسى يكون خيرا منهم. The same verses, and then Allah Azza said, uh, talking about غيبة, أيحب أحدكم أن يأكل لحم أخي ميتا فكرهتموه. Mentioning how bad and ugly ghiba is, backbiting is. And then he spoke about it. It's like Allah Azza is telling you, why do you mock one another and belittle one another when in reality you all were created from clay? There should be no reason for one to claim that he is superior to the, uh, to the other. There is no reason for one, you know, to backbite and talk about other people when in reality you guys are all the same. You're all the same. You're created from clay, but you differ in righteousness. And of righteousness, is leaving all these bad characteristics, belittling, name-calling, ghiba, backbiting. Leaving this is of righteousness. And the most noble of us is the most righteous. So now we understand, and this should be a motivator for you. Wake up in the morning, you say, SubhanAllah, my status in the sight of Allah uh, is based on this worship that I'm doing. This other person has put more effort in waking up early so that he can do wudu and pray the two units sunnah in the masjid and then sit in the masjid and do it dhikr. While I am late, I came after the first unit. So that person in this regard, he's better than me. He put more effort. I was lazier. I preferred to rest a couple of more minutes. So in this aspect, he is better. He did more work. May Allah Azza accept from all of us. So this is how we vary. This is how so some people choose to fast, some people don't. Some people might not fast, but they do other worship. So in reality, who's the one who's going to be judging us? Allah, because he sees the righteousness in our hearts. So righteousness is not really shown in our bodies, in our outer limbs. It is in the hearts. Okay. So this is very important. Motivate yourself every day in the morning. You know, today I'm going to be doing more good. I want to increase in rank. I want to be more and more noble in the sight of Allah. If somebody slanders you, you're patient. You know, I'm not going to retaliate. I want to gain the reward. I want to be noble in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Make this something that will motivate you. Now let's look at some other verses that talks about the two main conditions of worship. What are the two main conditions of worship anyway? Sincerity and following, you know, the, the example of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu in worshiping Allah. Basically, it is to be sincere to Allah. And number two, it is to worship Allah as Allah wants you to worship Him. Very important. Number two is very important. So you might be doing the Islamic, uh, so number two is not, if a person was complete, 100% sincere to Allah, but he wasn't doing the action that Allah wants him, the worship that Allah wants. He's doing something, you know, made up in his mind. So here, this is an issue. So here, this person, even though he's sincere, his worship is not accepted because it's not according to what Allah wants. It's not according to the example of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu So let's take a look at some of the verses that explain this point. The first or both verses actually are in Surah Al-Baqarah. And it's, there's an interesting observation, but I will keep it inshallah until the end of, uh, of the talk. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here said, لَيْسَ الْبِرَّ أَن تُوَلُّوا وُجُوهَكُمْ قِبَلَ الْمَشْرِقِ وَالْمَغْرِبِ So what is the story behind this verse? You know that in Surah Al-Baqarah, Allah Azza wa has mentioned that the direction of the Qibla was changed. How was it changed? They were facing Bayt al-Maqdis at the start. And then it, when, when, they were in Madi, when they were in Mecca, there was no issue. They used to put, uh, the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu used to make the Kaaba in front of him, and then he'll be praying the direction of Bayt al-Maqdis, okay, Palestine. Uh, the, uh, so this was at the start. But when they moved to Medina, now they have, there are different directions. If he's gonna be facing Mecca, He's not going to be facing Bayt al-Maqdis. If you're going to be facing Bayt al-Maqdis, he's not going to be facing uh, the Kaaba. So here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, has changed the Qibla from Bayt al-Maqdis to the Kaaba. And it was a, try, a test for many of the believers. So many of them, you know, they said, we were worshipping Allah. If this was the real religion, you know, and the Jews, some of them were putting these misconceptions 
and you know they were trying you know, to cause problems for the believers and you, you guys are not sure of your religion how come you're switching how come you're turning you're changing qibla what is this is this a religion even though their scholars knew that this is a sign that this is the true religion because in their books that they'll be facing the kaaba subhanallah so anyways it was a test for many of the people okay it was a difficult test but here allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is addressing this issue allah azza wa says Righteousness is not, you know, following the direction of East or West. Meaning, this is not what righteousness is. Righteousness is not doing actions and you were commanded to, you were told to face this Qibla or face this Qibla. This is not true righteousness. This is just an action. Ah, true righteousness is doing these actions what out of belief so you did what you did because you know that you believe in Allah and you know that Allah is the one who commanded you to do this ah now it's a worship get the point so if you do the Islamic actions without any belief you're in reality not doing any worship but if you're doing these actions knowing having the intention that you're doing it for the sake of Allah, okay, now it's a worship, okay? Uh, SubhanAllah, a common example of this is fasting, fasting, SubhanAllah. Fasting, you know, we abstain from food, drink, and all the other muftirat from the sun, from, uh, from dawn all the way until sunset. And many of the people who use this form of fasting calling dry intermittent fasting, so they're fasting, they're doing exactly what we're doing. Okay, they're not eating anything, they're not drinking anything, and they're abstaining from, you know, a couple of, maybe some of them might be doing it for 12 or more hours. It could be from even dawn all the way until evening, or maybe even until uh, later, until way late in the day. But do we say that this person has fasted? Of course not, it's not a worship. Why? He didn't do it as a worship of Allah. He didn't do it out of belief. He did it for health reasons. This is for a person who doesn't believe in Allah. Of course, a believer who does this, obeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and also he, he did it and he gets some health benefits, alhamdulillah, he's rewarded for this. He's rewarded for this. So this is the main factor. This is the main factor that changes this action. He did it for, uh, out of belief. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here said, لَيْسَ الْبِرَّ أَن تُوَلُّوا وُجُوهَكُمْ قِبَلَ الْمَشْرِقِ وَالْمَغْرِبِ وَلَكِنَّ الْبِرَّ مَنْ آمَنَ بِاللَّهِ First thing, who believed in Allah, man amana billahi wal yawm al akhiri wal malaikati wal kitabi wal nabiyin, believe in Allah, the final day, angels, uh, the prophets, wa aata al mala ala hubbihi. Look, now he's mentioning another type of worship. Wa aata al mala ala hubbihi. He gave, he spent, he did spend for the sake of Allah. Wa aata al mala ala hubbihi. Even though he loves this money. He gave this money. Oh, even though he's attached, he loves it. He did it for the sake of Allah. And pay attention to this. He started with the, with the qurba relatives. So just pay attention. To that. I just don't want to expand on this verse, but just pay attention to this. Allah, this is the benefit that Ibn Kathir has mentioned. That he said that Allah here started with relatives. So even before before what's called um before orphans. So if you have a relative who's needy, if you give him sadaqah, you get two rewards: reward of sadaqah and reward of uh, connecting ties of kinship. So this is more rewarding than giving it to any poor person. Even in this verse, any, since it's mentioned before, orphans, even even more than orphans, subhanAllah. This is, these are all types of worship that are done with money. And then look, he mentions another type of worship, physical. He established prayer. And he, at his zakah, he either paid zakah or it is, uh, at his zakah, he purified himself from tazkiyah. وَأَقَامَ الصَّلَاةَ وَآتَ الزَّكَاةَ And then he said, وَالْمُوفُونَ بِعَهْدِهِمْ إِذَا عَاهَدُوا And those who keep their promises, they made a promise. وَالْمُوفُونَ بِعَهْدِهِمْ إِذَا عَاهَدُوا وَالصَّابِرِينَ فِي الْبَأْسَاءِ وَالضَّرَّاءِ وَحِينَ الْبَسْ All types of patience. 
you know, patients uh, from uh, illnesses, sickness, patients are out of poverty, and patients were from the enemy, okay, as a result of the enemy. All types of patients. For those who, you know, have a background in Nahu, look at the Arab of Sabirin. It's a different Arab than the rest. This is Marfu' Al-Mufuna bi'ahdim idha ahadu And then Ma'atuf ala It's, it's a mansub ma'atuf ala marfu' This shouldn't be the case There should be either both mansub or both marfu' So it's mansub It's a uh, Sorry uh, It's yeah the word is mansuba uh, Was-sabirin It's not was-sabirun So why is this the case? Ibn Kathir he said Allah Azza wa Jal The nasub here It's a mansub because Allah is praising them والصابرين. This is just a benefit for you. والصابرين في البأساء والضراء وحين البأس. Okay, what about them? أولئك الذين صدقوا وأولئك هم المتقون. Those are the ones who are truly righteous. Those are the ones who are truthful in their claim that they worship Allah and they indeed done good deeds. So the start of the verse, Allah Azza said, ليس البرة. يعني this is not righteousness. This is not doing good. Facing Mashriq al Maghrib. Even though facing the Mashriq al Maghrib is an Islamic act, facing the Qibla is an Islamic act. But it's not a worship until Amana Billah, until he believes in Allah. So you should do the action, an Islamic action. Also, you should have the proper intention doing it out of belief. That's why, Subhanallah, uh, what was it? Was it Mujahid? He said, some of the scholars, any of the followers said, what is al-birr here in this verse? It is ma waqara fil qalb, or ma istaqarra fil qalb min, min ta'a. So you obey what, whatever is established in the heart of obeying. So when you obey, this is the worship. The worship is not the physical action. The worship is what's in the heart when you obey the Creator, when you obey Allah, doing what you're doing for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So inshallah, this verse is clear now. So not just the actions, the actions out of belief. This is what makes it a worship. So this verse, look, this is the observation. This verse is talking about sincerity. So do what you're doing the action, being sincere, doing the Islamic action, something that came from the Quran and Sunnah, but with the condition of being, it being for the sake of Allah. Now let's look at another verse, also in Surah Al-Baqarah, also mentioning bir. <laughs> Allah Azza just said, وَلَيْسَ الْبِرُّ بِأَنْ تَأْتُ الْبُيُوتَ مِنْ ظُهُورِهَا Allah is saying here, Bir, which is righteousness, is not, you know, uh, what's it called? Making a door, a back door in your house, so making a crack at, at your house, at the back, uh, creating a back door, and then, you know, leaving the house from it. So what we used to happen, let me explain this verse. The people of Quraysh, they used to call, be called al-Hums. So they were the ones, they were called Hums because they were the ones, the people of, of the, of the Kaaba, the people of the Bayt, the people of the Kaaba. So they were special, they were considered special. They, at the, at the state of Ihram, this was before Islam, obviously. At the state of Ihram, they were the only ones who were allowed to exit, to leave the house from the front door, because they were special. And any other type of people, an Ansar, or any, every, anyone else, they were not allowed to do, those, to do this. At the state of Ihram, they're not allowed to leave the house from the front door. They had to make a back door. Okay, and subhanAllah, these beliefs, they had this before Islam. So, but the thing here, who did they do it for? The observation here, who did they do this for? They claimed that they did this for Allah. So in terms of sincerity, they did this for the sake of Allah. Pay attention. And here in this verse, they did this for the sake of Allah. طيب, was it accepted? No. But sincerity is there, Shaykh. Why not? Sincerity is there. Sincerity was there, but the action is un-Islamic. Meaning, this action, they were not commanded to do so. Ah, so worship is an action that has combined two things. Sincerity, and also it being commanded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is what they refer to as following the Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa because revelation came uh, with, you know, through the Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa So the first verse, this is the observation, the first verse talked about Islamic actions, Without sincerity, it's not birr. The second verse, وَلَيْسَ الْبِرُّ It talks about an action, an un-Islamic action. So it wasn't, they weren't commanded, uh, commanded by it when, uh, from Islam. They were doing it any, from generations. Uh, why they were doing it, it was out of their opinions. 
even though they did it for the sake of Allah. So sincerity was there according to them, but they were not following the messenger. It wasn't Islam. So this was rejected also. Bir is to have righteousness, meaning to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with something that he commanded. And subhanAllah, then Allah, So Allah Azza wa then said, no, don't do that action. Actually, if you want to enter the house, you enter it from the front door. If you want to leave the house, you can leave from the front door. Allah didn't command you to make anything, any changes regarding this. Okay. So this is uh, the second verse. Now, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, also said when in Surah Al-Baqarah, subhanAllah, this is a great chapter, Surah Al-Baqarah. In Surah Al-Baqarah, Allah Azza wa Jal said when, you know, the Jews and Christians says, لَن يَدْخُلَ الْجَنَّةَ إِلَّا مَنْ كَانَ هُودٍ أَوْ نَصَارَ So they said that no one's going to be entering paradise except those who were Jews or Christians. So Allah Azza wa Jal said, قُلْ هَاتُوا بُرْهَانَكُمْ إِنْ كُنْتُمْ صَادِقِينَ Where is your proof for this? قُلْ هَاتُوا بُرْهَانَكُمْ Tell them, O Prophet, O Messenger of Allah, where is your proof for this? And then the verse, this is the verse that I want. بَلَى مَنْ أَسْلَمَ وَجْهَهُ لِلَّهِ Those who have الوجه, here some of them said this deen, whose religion is sincere to Allah. بَلَى مَنْ أَسْلَمَ وَجْهَهُ لِلَّهِ وَهُوَ مُحْسِن uh, Muhsin here is the word as Sa'id ibn Jubair said. Muhsin here is following the messenger Muhammad sallallahu So they combined both. أَسْلَمَ وَجْهَهُ لِلَّهِ Sincerity. وَهُوَ مُحْسِنٌ following the messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa مَنْ أَسْلَمَ وَجْهَهُ لِلَّهِ وَهُوَ مُحْسِنٌ فَلَا خَوْفٌ فَلَهُ أَجْرُهُ عِنْدَ رَبِّهِ So sorry, he gets his reward from Allah. فَلَهُ أَجْرُهُ عِنْدَ رَبِّهِ وَلَا خَوْفٌ عَلَيْهِمْ وَلَا هُمْ يَحْزَنُونَ He should not fear anything. لَا خَوْفٌ عَلَيْهِمْ from the future, from anything in the future. وَلَا هُمْ يَحْزَنُونَ from, that, from the things they have left. Okay, from the things that happened in the past and they left it for the sake of Allah. So this is the right worship. Okay, sincerity and following the Messenger Muhammad Sallallahu following the commands of Islam and being sincere. Now, another aspect, let's look at another aspect of ibadah, which is trying your best to complete the different branches of Islam. Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala said again, in which chapter? Surah Al-Baqarah. Yeah, wallahi, this chapter is a great chapter. Surah Al-Baqarah is a great chapter. Inshallah, we're gonna be talking about the virtues of this chapter in some other video. It's a great chapter, honestly. Look at, look at all these benefits from this chapter. Allah Azza wa said in Surah Al-Baqarah, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu dukhulu fi silmi kaafah wa la tattabu wa la tattabi'u khutwati shaytan innahu lakum aduwu mubin. So Allah Azza wa is saying, Oh, you believe, udukhulu fi silmi, enter Islam kaafah, completely following and trying to complete all the different branches of Islam. What does this verse mean? This verse means What are we saying, Shaykh? This is the same meaning. When we say What does it mean? I want to explain both verses together. You're a Muslim. The Sirat al-Mustaqim is an agreement that the Sirat al-Mustaqim, the straight path is Islam. So why are you asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide you to Islam, even though you are a Muslim, you're a Muslim, you're reciting Hidina Salat al-Mustaqim. Scholars like Ibn Kathir, Al-Wahidi, and Ibn Rajab, so many of them, they said, Hidina Salat al-Mustaqim, as in guide us to the right path, which is Islam, and then keep us firm on it. This is what the statement of Ibn Kathir, keep us firm on it. And Ibn Rajab, this is a benefit, I remember this from Ibn Rajab, he said, can not just keep us firm on it, complete our faith in achieving all the different branches of Islam. So every day in reality, you're asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to complete your faith when you're saying, اهدنا الصراط المستقيم. Guide us to the straight path, you're asking Allah to keep you firm on that straight path, and you're asking Allah to complete your faith by doing all the different actions of Islam, to complete all the different branches of Islam. Just like Allah Azza wa Jal said in Surah Al-Baqarah, the verse that we have recited, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu udkhulu fi silmi kaafah enter in Islam completely try to complete all the different branches of Islam so what does this verse mean ahdin as-sirat al-mustaqim and ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu udkhulu fi silmi kaafah basically it means try your best try your best best to encompass all the different branches of Islam to try to worship Allah as much as possible and trying to not miss out on any command so you're commanded to pray. You try your best to do to, to pray your obligatory prayer. Then you try your best to pray the sunnah. You try your best to give sadaqah. 
At the same time, you try your best to give zakah. You fast Ramadan, and then you try your best to fast three days of every month, or even better, uh, three days of every month, or even uh, every Monday and t- on Thursday, which is one level higher, or even one of the greatest levels, Siyam Dawood, one day on, one day off. Or even, and also try to be kind to the neighbor, be dutiful towards your parents, uh, you know, say, uh, seek knowledge. So all these different branches of Islam, try your best to do as much as possible. And I'll give you a benefit. As Ibn al-Qayyim, he mentioned when he talked about, so which path to Allah is the best path? Is it the path of jihad? Is it the path of those who give sadaqah? Is it the path of siyam? Is it the path of qiyam? He said, the best path is the path that it comp- that encompasses everything. SubhanAllah. He said, the path to Allah, the best path and the greatest path, those of the high levels of paradise, are those that try to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, obeying every single command they are able to. Yeah, they try their best to, to follow every single sunnah. They want to apply as much as possible. They want to apply as much as possible and they're rewarded for that. This is the best path to Allah. That's why Allah Azza wa Jalla is commanding us, خُلُوا فِي السِّلْمِ kafa. You know, don't just believe in some aspects of Islam and leave others. You find a person doing praying, but not fasting. Or the opposite, you see a person fasting, but not praying. We tell them, خُلُوا فِي السِّلْمِ kafa. Enter Islam completely. This is the command of Allah. Allah did not say, choose whatever you want of Islam and leave. Especially the obligations, especially the obligations. Those who don't pray, but they say, you know, they fast. Or they don't pray the obligatory prayers, but he does Qiyam on Laylat al-Qadr. <laughs> Seriously? What is this? So, ادخلوا في السلم كافة. Look, follow Islam entirely, completely, just like Allah Azza wa has commanded. And this is what you're asking Allah in reality when you're reciting Surah Al-Fatiha. So with this, inshallah, ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he has guided us to the truth and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, to benefit myself and to benefit my brothers and sisters from this uh, talk and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept from us and with this we will end inshallah to see each other in the next video. Hada wallahu alam wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam 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 wa